What's up, mouse enthusiasts? This is Dave with Gen 3D Tech. Today, we're going to be looking at the EVGA X12 Amidextrous Wired Gaming Mouse. Let's check it out. All right, guys. Yep, this mouse right here is a brand new mouse. It just came out the other day. I just got it a few days ago, and I've been putting it through the ringer. And this mouse costs forty nine ninety nine, I believe. Um, and if you're a uh, uh, an EVGA Elite member, you can get free shipping for a limited time, I believe. And I think it was a uh, two day shipping. Anyways, this mouse um, was one that interests me when I saw it. Their first round of, of mice that came out uh, last year were not very appealing looking. They're very um, five, ten years uh, ago styling wise. This is still has a little bit of that styling, but they've toned it down a bit. And I hope they keep toning it down. Uh, the other thing that people were complaining about is all the mice that they came out with were way too heavy. Uh, this mouse comes in at 75 grams, which is, you know, anything under 80 grams, I consider a lightweight mouse. And it definitely feels pretty light in the hands. I don't have a problem with the weight whatsoever. The shape is, is actually um, very, uh, very different than any mouse that I've ever felt. It's this part right here on both sides. Um, that part right there just kind of, I don't know, it locks you in. The thing that, it, the, um, the initial reaction that I got when I first started using this was I absolutely hated it. It felt very uncomfortable and it actually caused me some pain. And this finger right here, it's like I didn't know what to do with it. And I kept ac accidentally uh, actuating these um side mouse buttons on the right hand side um, that is a, it is a plus you know if you're um, left-handed you can definitely use this mouse uh, or if you like having buttons on both sides but I it's actually very difficult to to actuate um, these um, right buttons as a right-handed person or and vice versa I really wish they did what the uh, Dornfinger mouse that I reviewed recently did um, on that mouse, there's a little switch that you can turn off uh, one side or the other or enable uh, both. Because I've accidentally hit these buttons quite a few times. And to continue on with the shape, if, they, if I could give them some constructive criticism, um, what I'd like to see is an uh, Argo version of this mouse for right-handed people. And I, don't, I really like the back part. Um, it's this right hand, this part right here that they need to change. Um, give me a place to rest this finger right here. And I think it would be a phenomenal mouse. As for the build quality of this mouse, it seems pretty solid to me from um, what I've felt. There's, there's a little bit of side flex right there on the sides. Um, none on the bottom. On the top, none. As for side flex, there's very, very little. And there's very, very little pre-travel and post-travel. Very good implementation of the switches and buttons. The score wheel is actually nice and quiet. And it has a, a, a rubber ring around it. Uh, it does feel fairly tactile. It does have some RGB there. It's a really large um, score wheel too. Um, I actually don't mind the score wheel whatsoever. It's it's not the best, but it's it's definitely not something that's hurting it. Um, the DPI button is pretty large, um, but I don't have any problems accidentally hitting this one. On the bottom, there's a, a profile button, um, so you can switch between profiles. And we'll I'll go over the software here in a little bit. And as far as the sensor, it's a Pixar um, 
3389 sensor, which is a very capable sensor. Um, the other nice thing that this thing has is it has a separate uh, LOD sensor, um, which helps uh, uh, maintain the liftoff distance, um, which is a nice feature. Um, some of the other um, uh, higher versions of this mouse that came out last year have uh, two LOD sensors, um, and this one only has one. But I think uh, one of the things they were trying to do, the main complaints on those mice were they were too expensive. Um, people wanted to get something right in this price range, which was, you know, the $40, $50 range, um, and they wanted something lighter weight. So I think they're partially there. And I definitely have some suggestions for the next one. And I think if they follow those, we're going to have a spectacular mouse. Because one thing that this thing has going for it is the internals are are just great. Um, the sensor on it is great. Um, the tracking. Um, I've never aimed better in any other mouse than this mouse right here. As spoiler, the it's not comfortable for sure. Like I would not use this as a daily driver mouse. As far as shooter games, I've never performed better uh, aiming wise than on this mouse. Um, it wasn't comfortable um, at first. And I, I kind of learned how to adjust my, um, my style. Um, I used more of a uh, claw style grip on this. And that reduced some of the pain uh, that I felt in this finger right here. But it's it's still there a little bit. Um, and if you play this for a long time, it's not super comfortable. But it's kind of worth it for how well I performed. Um, kind of reminds me of the uh, Extrafy MZ1, even though it's completely different shapes. But that mouse also... Um, it's not very comfortable, um, but I aim really well with it. Um, maybe I'll do a review on that one here in, in the in the future. Um, it's just in the pile of mice I have. One thing I'm not crazy about is the feet. They're just a weird shape, especially on the front. So it's going to make it really difficult to swap them out for aftermarket um, feet. And because this is probably not going to be, you know, a very um, popular mouse overall sales wise, I doubt anybody's going to make any for this mouse. Um, so you're going to be limited on the options. They're not terrible, but I would have liked to seen uh, some feet that were a little bit more standard. That'd be easier to replace. As far as the switches go, they're Omron 60 mil switches. Um, you know, some people either hate Omrons or they, or they love them. Some people think they're mushy, but the implementation of, of these are actually, are really nice. The, uh, nice and clicky and very spammable. So I don't mind these switches at all. Um, the, uh, the side buttons, they don't stick out very far. Um, like I said, I act, I hate the ones on the right. Because I keep hitting them, but the ones on on the left are I like them a lot. DPI buttons, nice and big. The mouse wheel button, also very nice. And here's how they sound. As for the cable, it's it's a decent paracord cable. It's fairly lightweight. Um, there's definitely better ones, but I don't have any problem with this cable. It's 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 better than most. I'd love to see a wireless version of this mouse, especially one that has the shape changes that I mentioned before. But yeah, maybe we'll see one uh, in the near future. Uh, at least a, a lighter weight 
one. I'd be definitely okay with them getting rid of some of the RGB. Like, I mean, while it looks kind of cool, it's kind of unnecessary. If we could take that out, you know, it might reduce some of the, the weight and get it down closer to 60 grams, which would be better. There's quite a few um, RGB effects, and uh, I'll go over some of that in the software. Why don't we just take a quick look at the software, and then we'll we'll go on from there. And here's the software. This is the EVGA uh, Unleash RGB software. It was a little confusing which software was actually used for the mouse, but it's the Unleash RGB. Um, so yeah, this is the software, and um, right here you can adjust the sleep mode time, and this uh, this is the default five minutes, which I think is fine. You could turn that off because it's it's a wired mouse, so uh, it's more important for wireless. Uh, and right here, the mouse had a um, default of a thousand hertz, and I I set it to eight thousand. Um, there's five different profiles right here that you can set. Um, here's all there's five different um, DPI stages, and uh, the interesting thing was normally this. Uh, I would set to 2400 um, and I was actually using uh, 3200 and because of the way the um, the aiming is on this mouse um, I was it's really the first mouse I've ever been able to use 3200 DPI um, successfully so uh, that was a very interesting thing about it. unexpected and interesting right here this you had to actually set, um, I think it was under uh, general or something like that, uh, standard, yep. So I created one um, called mouse pad and basically uh, set it for uh, FPS gaming. Uh, and when you set this, it actually has you move it around the surface area you're gonna play on um, and the sensor just uh, takes a reading of that to adjust the the sensor for and it actually did make a difference so um but you might be aware that if you change out your your mouse pad that you might want to run this again um because it's expecting a uh, whatever surface you ran this on initially and right here this is all the different lighting effects and you can change it individually for these three zones um there's a, a just a few of them I just left it on the default and of course over here you can change the speed and brightness right here is where you can change the key binds and so while I'm in here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disable that and this one also reason being because I keep hitting them on accident so <laughs> might as well disable them now and of course there's a macro editor here I mean, some people were complaining about the software um, in the uh, in the comments for the mice that were released last year, but I really don't have any problem with this software. It's pretty basic, nice, clean interface. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Another interesting thing about this mouse is the 8,000 hertz pulling rate that it has, uh, much like the Viper 8K. Um, it's definitely a, a, a noticeable feature. Um, it, I think it does make a difference in games. Like I said, aiming wise and performance wise, this is the the best I've ever performed in, in any shooter game. I'm not saying that this will be the, you know, the results for you, but for me, that's what it was. I was surprised by that, especially after the initial. Um, reaction that I got when I first started just even started just holding this mouse I hate like I said I hated it at first and but I gave it a chance and I've definitely warmed up to this mouse and it's definitely going to be in my rotation which I didn't expect that to be I just got it because um well it looked it had interesting stats and um the price was was right and and it's just a $50 mouse um this mouse comes in um, white like I have here, and uh, you can also get it in black. I believe the white's already sold out, um, but you can get it from the EVGA store. 
uh, like I said, it's forty nine ninety nine, and they have the the free shipping um, currently for Elite members. Another notable feature is this mouse has support for uh, the NVIDIA Reflex. Um, there's only a few mice that do have support for that, but it's definitely not uh, a reason to buy this mouse. For one, I mean, all it means is that, first of all, you have to have an NVIDIA card. Uh, and then second, you have to have a mouse that supports it like this mouse right here. And then you have to have a monitor that supports it. And currently, um, just the latest implementation of the uh, NVIDIA G-Sync monitors that are 360 hertz um, support that. They have a, a mode you can turn on and then you can test the latency on it. Again, if you have the right equipment, um, you can use this to test the, the latency, uh, whereas normally you have to have uh, external hardware that you put in front of the monitor and then you can test it that way. Um, so it's just a very limited section of, of people that might actually be able to take advantage of this feature. But if you do happen to have one of these uh, uh, newer G-Sync 360 hertz monitors it might be worth grabbing this just to test out that feature um, I don't have one so can't test it out and I'll go ahead and post the link in the description um, for the Nvidia reflex overview like I said gaming wise I've never aimed better in Kovacs I I set personal uh, best using this mouse um, I played six matches of uh, Overwatch with this mouse and got player of the game five times in a row. After the first match where I was getting used to the mouse, um, played several other games and did much, much better than normal. Um, so, you know, if you're an older guy like me and you're, you know, losing your reflexes a little bit and you're trying to compensate with hardware, you might look into a mouse like this because it honestly did make a difference for me um but like i said you might not like the uh, comfort level of this mouse I, I still don't like it um again if evj if you're list watching this video please um i'd be happy to talk with you about you know changes that you could do um i understand you know you're trying to sell an ambidextrous mouse for right and left uh, users but the implementation of it is is not the best um there's definitely other um mice that are, are ambidextrous that don't have the discomfort level that this mouse has i definitely think there's parts of the shape that um lock you in the aiming and it's all this this section at the back i think is making a big difference um but i just think if you could just modify this right side right here you'd have a really really good mouse um and if you could also somehow make this wireless get rid of some of this rgb get the weight down even more i think you have a real winner on your hands probably take moving to a different sensor though i'd love to see a wireless version of this mouse or a more refined uh, argo version of this mouse or just simply fixing the shape a little bit to make it uh, a little bit more comfortable while still maintaining the uh the good attributes um, that help assist in aiming. So comfort wise, you know, I give this thing like a three out of 10, uh, but performance wise and value wise, you know, this is like definitely like a 92. <laughs> it's, it's just great as far as the performance and, uh, and for the money, it's hard to beat, um, you know, Fifty dollars for a uh, good sensor with 8K um, hertz pulling rate. You know, it's not super heavy. It's a pretty good deal, I believe. One thing I like to mention though is the previous release of mice that the EVJ did. They definitely had a, a lot of build quality issues. A lot of people were complaining about things breaking in short periods of time. Um, so that is an area of concern. Hopefully, you know, um, they took a, those criticisms to, to heart and made some changes and improved their quality. Um, 
I know in the past when when EVGA has um, made mistakes um, build quality wise, like on graphics cards, you know, the very next release, they fix those things. They're a, a pretty good company overall. Um, and I usually had real good confidence in things that they make. So, you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm definitely going to use this in my rotation and I'll definitely update you guys uh, after a few months of use. Uh, to let you know if this mouse it holds up or if it doesn't um, but so far the the build quality seems really good to me and I think it's gonna hold up but I don't know for sure um, so that's really the my biggest question mark is will it hold up uh, and as far as will you like this mouse you know um, it's really about the shape um, it's a good mouse for, you know, if you have medium sized hands, it might be a little too big if you've got small hands, but I, th I think you could probably make it work, but I definitely don't recommend it if, the, if you want to use a mouse for everything, because I just don't find it comfortable just for general use, but for gaming short periods of time, it's awesome. Anyways, guys, that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, review and found it useful. Um, if you have any questions about this mouse, uh, please ask uh, in the comments and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, if you have any uh, ideas or comments and how I can improve these reviews, please you know let me know. Let me know if I suck, that's f fine too. Um, and uh, I've got lots of other reviews. Uh, I've got a whole backlog of reviews, so I'm definitely gonna be try and get another one out as soon as possible as in fact as soon as I stop filming this I'm gonna start filming another one uh, trying to catch up anyways uh, I'll catch you next time and thanks for coming